kids will come up through school and they'll say, gosh, I hate science. And my response is, you don't hate science. Nobody hates science because we were all the little kid who would see something and go, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Why does that happen? I mean, that's, that's like a human experience. And so I think when people or kids say they don't like science, what they really mean is they don't like how we sometimes teach science. The kids are naturally in inquisitive. They want to go and look and find and discover things. Because what you're really doing is teaching them how to think and teaching them how to make connections. And that's so important in science, is allowing them to, to, to see the process of how we arrive at this answer. Inquiry-based learning starts with a question that the students find the answer to. So that might be something like, what makes water evaporate? Or at a higher level, middle school or high school, the, the inquiry-based learning could be something like the kid generates their own question and you supply the resources that they need to research it and test it. It's not just, here's a, here's a worksheet. You know, it, it's really, you got to think through all the steps. That is the most important thing in science, not ideas, not, not content things that, that really they might forget anyway and their life is still going to go on and it's going to be okay. <laughs> And I could tell them how to get there and do all those things, but then again, they're not the ones that are learning it then. If I'm directing them, and okay, you gotta do step one, step two, step three. And so there is a more powerful uh, experience when they go, whoa, I found it. We become too concerned with, this is the right answer and this is what you wanna know. When really what they need to know is, how did we find that out? That's the journey of science. A unifying concept or process is more about how science is connected all the way through, about what science actually is. When I heard elementary teachers talking about what big idea, what big idea, I thought they were talking about something like, like plate tectonics or genetics or Newton's laws. And then when I heard they were talking about things like systems and constancy and change and models and, and scale and form and function, I realized, oh, that's really good. And the American Association for the Advancement of Science has, has a couple of really good resources written for teachers about those themes. They're the backbone of science. They're, they're, they're what forms why we have all this content that we have to teach us because it all fits in with these five unifying concepts. Can I give you an example? Because <laughs> I love it. Uh, one of them, like, like if, if you're in kindergarten and second grade, what they think a kid that age should know is that uh, for systems, things are made from parts. And if one of the parts is broken or missing, the thing won't work. And that the thing does stuff that the parts can't do by themselves. So the weather, well, what are the parts of the weather? Well, the temperature, wind movement, clouds, precipitation. And then it goes all the way up, like, like in high school. They get much more into the process between the parts and how those processes produce outputs. Some of which you want, some of which you don't want, some of which you never predicted. The temperature drops or the wind starts to blow. What does that affect? How does that affect the weather somewhere else? Well, if you're going to bring technology or math into your science lesson, it has to feel natural. You can't bring technology or math into the lesson just because I have to, I have to integrate math. So let me find something that seems vaguely connected to this and we'll do some math. Like really, there has to be a purpose for it. So if you're measuring the growth of, of your plants over the weeks, well, you measure how much water you put on it, you measure how much it grows. You've got two numbers there that, that you can plot on a graph where you can see, okay, as water increases, the, the plants grow more. And then with that, okay, so if I'm putting four inches of water on the plants a week and getting six inches of growth, how much, what will happen if I put eight inches of water? And then they would just follow the line up. A lot of people don't consider measurement important, but really it's one of the most fundamental skills in science, knowing how to take a measurement, knowing what the measurement means, knowing how it impacts my understanding of what I'm trying to get to at the end. If the lesson becomes better because of the inclusion of math or technology, then you're probably doing it right. I, I think it's vital that we give them the, the groundwork and the experiences to fail and to succeed. And I tell my kids, if you're good at failing, you'll be great at science because most things are discovered by mistake or by accident or by failure. And, and as long as you always come back to, are they exploring, are they investigating, are they analyzing things, are they putting pieces together to come up with, with the information that you want them to understand, then they're doing science. <laughs>